say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in the farmer's kitchen, in town farmer's country kitchen. cook something good now funding for tim farmer's country kitchen is brought to you by harvest energy solutions harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away the city of stanford kentucky come back home to stanford Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Look what I got here. Surprises. I love going to the woods and finding things like this and taking them back for Nikki for a surprise. Now, the other day, a buddy of mine and I were out hunting and I saw, I kept seeing something out of the corner of my eye and I thought, why, why did somebody leave a milk jug or a soccer ball laying in the woods? And I started thinking, I hope that's what I think it is. And it was, and it is a giant puffball mushroom. Now, when it comes to mushrooms, you have to be careful. Let me think, with a name like Destroying Angel or Death Cap, hmm, that sounds like a not very fun thing to eat. I don't know if it's Amanita or Amanita, you stay away from those. Here's a couple pictures of what they look like. Now the difference between the giant puffball and the other family, the Destroying Angel and Death Cap stuff, which makes you die, like within 24 hours, you don't want it, your kidneys shut down, and it's a horrible, horrible way to go. And why am I so comfortable out here with these particular mushrooms? Because I've been eating them for years. When we get back to the cabin, I'm gonna show you how to identify these. Now, identification on mushrooms is up to you, not up to me. Don't say, I saw Tim Farmer eating one of them mushrooms, and my brother and sister and his whole family ate one of them death caps, and they're all dead very serious business. You identify, it's not my job, I'm gonna eat this. If I die, it's my fault. These are gonna be white all the way through. If they had gills or any coloration in the middle and it wasn't the same all the way through, I would not touch these. But being that they are what I know they are, we're going back to the cabin, gonna surprise Nikki. She loves mushrooms. Now one thing about these, these have a very short shelf life. You can't leave them laying around. The quicker you eat them, the better. Don't wash them. Do not wash them. You'll just take the hide off of them. They'll get all mushy and nasty. 
These things will eventually turn dark and they will become nothing but spores, go billions of spores. You'll step on them, that's how they get their name. And as these spores go out into the wind and fly all over the place, these aren't gonna make it to the spore stage because they're going in my belly. They're loosely attached to the ground. You just grab them, pull them up, boom, you're good to go. Are you impressed? I want to take this and serve it like a volleyball. I'm telling you what, these are some of my favorite mushrooms to wow. eat. Now let's go ahead and cut this in half. Do not wash these. Oh my goodness. Now, do you notice that throughout that, it's the same texture. It doesn't change. There's no color changes. There's no texture changes. It's all the same. It doesn't smell good. It smells really good. Now, if you saw gills, and you know what gills mm -hmm. are in a mushroom, then don't eat it. It's that simple. These things get huge. There's no doubt if it's this big. Now these mushrooms you can cut up any way you want. I'm gonna cut it up in a big, like a, like this. Here. You know what let's do? Let's take these and cut them in like strips like this. And we're gonna take a little less than a half a stick of butter. <laughs> yeah, I love this stuff. I mean, love it. I'm gonna put that in there with that. And you can actually fry this too, like we did a slice. Let's do a slice too, show you how we can do this. Do a slice about like I did the other ones. Put it in there like that. Just rings, right? Yeah. You can cut them up into like long pieces, like just cut through them a couple times. Now will they get bigger than this? Oh yeah. These things sometimes can get three, four times size that. Really? That's why they call them a giant puff off. These have a wonderful texture. A little salt. That smell delicious. A little pepper. No death caps or destroying angels for me, please. Just the giant puff ball today. And I joke, but it's very serious business, especially if you're a young one. Don't you dare take something and try to eat it before your parents have taken a look at it. Because there's stuff out there that will just flat kill you. So we just got this on medium heat with butter. That'd be good on a sandwich, those pieces. Oh yeah. And you can use this just like you'd use eggplant or even a big portobello. Now is this the only time of year these come out or? or they come out in the fall. Just in the fall. Now these cook down. Man, the taste. Dang, try it. All right, this is what we're having for breakfast. <laughs> Later on, guess who's coming out? Who? Deanne Elmore. Oh, she's a good cook. You know what she's bringing? What? Yum. It's a lunch. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yum. Now see how they kind of shrunk up. Let's get the butter and the onions. Wow. That's really good. <laughs> now a lot of people like these with eggs. Mm -hmm. But this is the main wow. course. And I could keep on eating. This is delicious. Is that not delicious? Good breakfast, thank you. When you eat it, it almost has the texture of eggs. Mm hmm And again, a lot of people eat them with eggs. It does have that texture. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'll be playing in the field today picking up mushrooms. Let's eat the rest of this, clean this mess up. I think Deanne's on her way. Okay, All right. sounds good. Deanne Elmore. Hey, Tim. How are you? You smell anything? Mushrooms mm, we had in here. Yes, and Doesn't onions. Smell it smells great. But I know that. That's not a mushroom. No, it's not. It's a brisket. It is a brisket. That's a fine looking brisket. Yes. What are you going to do with this brisket? I am going to bake this brisket in um, a simple ALA in the oven. marinade in the oven, yes. How long does it take? It takes three and a half hours total. I like that. Mm -hmm. Not Makes like your house smell great. Oh man, that's because so many people think you have to do a brisket, you have to smoke it. No you don't. Mm -mm. Important thing for me is to make sure that it's completely tinted in foil mm -hmm. so that none of that steam escapes and it stays nice and moist. Ooh, right? you're making me hungry here. Yeah. Well it's I very guess. easy. I like okay. simple and easy. Right. Um, we're just going to take a, a package of onion soup mix. Well, that's so good in so many things. It is. It's such a versatile thing. And you know, I don't think I've ever made onion soup with it. <laughs> I always cook with it. For what it's intended for, you never Right. Use it. Never used it for what it's intended for. And then we're going to put just a cup of ketchup. And I'm just going to eyeball it, I think. 
You know, people that close. watch our show, they always say they like the fact that we use mostly stuff that they have in their kitchen or can access easily. Very and simple sure doing and that easy. Today. I am. Right. It's, you know, ketchup, onion soup mix, and a bottle of Alite. Okay. I like where you're going. That smells really good. <laughs> Interesting. It's very saucy, really thin. You know, I'm so glad you're showing a brisket in the oven as opposed to the other way. Yes. Yeah. We're going to have somebody do that for long. But this is a nice wintertime. Mm -hmm. You talk about wanting to smell it. Don't you love walking in the house? Put it in the oven in the morning, you know, go to Let church or go back out. Right, and, and you're good. And I'm just going to put a little salt and pepper okay. on, on here. There's probably plenty of salt in the onion soup mix, so you can leave that off if you want to, mm. if you're watching your salt. But I always put a little salt and pepper. And then all we're gonna do is just pour this over. Just like that. Mm -hmm, just like that. And then we're gonna roast it for two hours. And then at the end of two hours, we're gonna add, if you want to, you don't have to, but I like to add um, potatoes, carrots. Veggies. You can even, mm -hmm, sure. Whatever you want. And again, you can see how saucy that is. You know what? That has some kind of smell going on there. It's a pretty basic sweet and sour I, I, kind I, of. I can see where you're going here. Mm -hmm. So then we're just going to tint it in foil. Doing all that moisture to stay in there. Right, I do. I, I don't want it to dry out because nobody wants dry mm -hmm. beef. Mm -hmm. no, you know, everybody it. wants it nice and moist. You want to be able to slice it, shred it, whatever you want really, to do with it. It really does smell good. <sighs> And it's easy, you know. Mm -hmm. I spent what? The, your prep time right there was about three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna pop it in the oven. Ta-da! Ta-da! Can I? Absolutely. Mm hmm. I need your potatoes. Those and are carrots. my potatoes and carrots that wow. I grow. Yes, oh, out of man. my garden. I don't mean to let that sink into that. And like you said, there's nothing overwhelmingly sweet, mm -mm. but it really cooked it down, made it tender. I cut it with my fork. Right. Mmm. That tastes like the most excellent roast you've ever had. Sunday afternoon. And how many times have you seen a brisket and had to get out of the table saw to cut it? Mmm. Not here. And this is only... That can be very dry. Yeah. Why. So this is only three something hours? Mm-hmm. Three and a half hours. Mm. After two hours, you put in your vegetables mm -hmm. and leave them for an hour and a half. Mm. And I make sure that I coat them in the gravy. And wow. then if there's, if you need to add a little more water or broth, you can. And you could slice them and put them on a, on a sandwich too if you didn't want to do the potatoes. And... Mm, 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 mm. You're good. And not quite a barbecue either. Mm -mm. You know, it's sort of a, a hybrid. Wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. <laughs>
When do you start thinking about planting your fall garden? Fall garden, I ought to usually put it about the second week in uh, August. Second week in August. Yeah. Now what are you going to plant? Broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. Now I'm looking right here at some of the prettiest broccoli that I have seen in a long time. Beautiful cabbage, and they're not bitten up like the spring cabbages. Now the, the, that's the reason I put out the stuff in the late fall. Now, of course, maybe it eat up. Again, we're going to refer now to a segment that we did not long ago, the old-fashioned way to store your cabbage. You'll dig a hole right here. That's, that was interesting in itself. If you yeah. want to refer back to that, that's how you store for winter. But this over here, cauliflower coming on, you still got a few tomatoes too. Yeah, that's still still got tomatoes. And the cauliflower hadn't started producing yet. It takes it, it about two weeks behind the others. You uh, introduced me to the poodoo bucket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and we've got alpaca and we've got sheep. And you talk about taking that manure, yeah. put it in your rain bucket, and you get a pretty potent mixture of yeah. poodoo. After about seven days, you can start using it. Now you water with. have been using chicken. Right. I bet that smells good in the hot summer time. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, <laughs> run Lois out of here. And I may go back to the cow or something else after this year. <laughs> Just a little ripe is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, right. Yeah. But you say about every three weeks, you'll come over here and pour some of that around the base. Yeah, pour so around the base of it. Yeah. So instead of 10, 10, 10, use chicken, chicken, chicken. Right, right. I like where you're going with that. <laughs> It's so cheaper. You, it's cheaper. Yeah. It may not smell as good. You may want it downwind, or, or not, or excuse me, no not downwind from your house. <laughs> but beautiful broccoli, beautiful cabbage, beautiful, looks like you might have some greens over there too. Yeah, and the greens on the other end of this. Uh -huh. We have froze a lot of greens in the last two or three days. Freeze is the operative word for today, because I know Lois is in there taking some of his fresh cabbage, and she's going to make... Freezer slaw. <laughs> That's an old-fashioned thing, you yeah. know what? What do you like your freezer slaw? How do you like to eat it? Well, we usually take the cookouts and put it on, kind of adds to your hamburgers and hot dogs and things like that when you're cooking out. So basically, she takes this, puts it in a small container, enough for a get-together. Yeah, right. And boom, she takes it to the cabin in the woods and right. y'all are chowing down. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, let's go inside and see what Lois is doing. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in Lois's kitchen. I always love coming to your kitchen because it always smells interesting. There's always good stuff. Bobby and I were wandering around a garden and he was showing me his greens. And so this is like the bonus part of today's. This is like the extra. These are greens. Right. And they're ready to go. This is like a serving enough for what, four people? Mm-hmm, yes. Tell me how you do that. Well, uh, when we bring in lots of them to freeze. We wash, wash, wash them to begin with. Get the critters off. All right, get the critters off. Now you know they boil down to nothing. Mm -hmm. So he just keeps adding it and adding it and adding mm -hmm. it until he gets a full container. Mm -hmm. Then you boil mm -hmm. it down for a couple of hours. And then we boil them for a couple of hours until they're good and tender. And then of course they have to cool. And then we bring them back in and drain them completely. Put it in quart containers. Mm -hmm. And you got that right there. That's right. And you said a little canola oil and salt and you're good to go. A little canola oil and salt is what I put in them. And you know what we I don't doing. ever have uh, any to throw away. What do you put in them? Bacon grease mm -hmm. and onions and then a little more bacon grease. Well, I may have to try that someday. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that's what my mother and my grandmother did. Oh, yeah, but Lord. I, I have a cardiac patient. Yeah. husband yeah. and they taught me how to cook with canola oil and that's what I've done since 89. You do what they tell you to do. That's right. Because I'll probably have to go to the canola oil here for long because all the stuff I've been eating. Well they told him not to eat eggs more than two a week. He eats two every morning <laughs> and has for a long long time. Yeah. Uh, so. Hey man's got to do what a man's got to do. That's right. But the real reason we're here today that was that was the bonus right there. That was that was a good bonus thing too is freezer slaw. Mm -hmm. That's an old fashioned thing. We're into that now that the cabbage is fresh in the fall garden. Mm -hmm. So we've been making some of that today and got a little more to make. And you know what I really like about this? First of all, you got all fresh vegetables to put in this. It's very easy and doesn't have a lot of different things in it. Now, for, how long have you been doing the freezer slaw? Oh, we've, we've been doing freezer slaw ever since we've been raising a fall garden. We make our sauerkraut in the spring, and then we do the freezer slaw in the fall. So, you, what, 20 years, 30 years? Uh, no, not that long. Maybe 10. 10 years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What turns you on to this? Well, of course, we really like coleslaw, mm -hmm. and I just saw some 
um, recipes and I thought, well, I'll give it a try and it was really a big thing. Usually one bucket do you or sometimes you have to take two? Well, usually I just take one and if I take two, then we have a son-in-law who loves to take that leftover home with him, so. Okay, let's talk about how you make this. It sounds fairly simple, but I've already tasted it. I already snuck in there and it's absolutely beautiful taste and leaves a great aftertaste in your mouth. What do you do to make this? Well, you just bring in the fresh vegetables from the garden. I have three vegetables in it, a carrot, a green pepper, and a head of cabbage. So and if you're doing 20 of these or one of these, that's your basic recipe. That's my basic one recipe. One carrot to one and one pepper per head of cabbage. Right. Gotcha. And then there's a dressing that you uh, put together and bring it to a boil. And then you let it cool to lukewarm before you add all your vegetables into it. And, what is that now? What's your... Uh, it is two cups of sugar, one cup of vinegar, a fourth cup of water, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of celery seed. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my self right out of the way. I'm going to watch you make this. I'll talk to you from over there. Okay. okay. this with me. Don't All right. just talking that smells fresh everything about it smells I already know what it tastes like because I already had some but I want some more mmm so once again that's not to confuse you let that get room temperature mm -hmm. before you pour your stuff in because you don't want to cook your vegetables right and that way you get that fresh taste when you mm -hmm. open this up mm -hmm. oh wow that is most excellent right there oh thank you again your favorite. People love you, Lois. Oh, well, very good. They love I... your stuff, and we do too, so thank oh. you very much. Well, you're welcome. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. Well, we was born and raised back in the sticks. Everybody used to call us six. Had a 20-acre holler that was nestled between two hills. Raised hogs and chickens and cows and a mule might have been hillbillies, but there weren't no food we had plenty to eat. Raised it all ourselves. Now the biggest problem that we ever had was a mule named Rodney kept everybody mad. No matter how hard we tried, we couldn't keep him fenced in. He'd get in the garden in Ma's flyer bed and paw his cuffs and crack his old gray head, settle his nerves with a drink and patch the fence again. Me and my brother bought an electric fence battery and all, put it up one night, gonna surprise our paw. Had to keep the mule in so Paul wouldn't get so tense. Paul got up that night, moving kind of quick, headed for the outhouse, the fall was thick. Must have lost his way, got hung in that electric fence. Yeah, he must have went through a spiritual change. He don't look the same anymore. Works hard every day, goes to church every Sunday. No more loafing at the country store. Treats us all different, he can quit chewing the backer. Ain't cussed or drank ever since. The night that Paul got hung in that electric fence. We heard Paul scream, he said, come quick, sons. Martians have got me, they're zap me with a gun. Wasn't hard to find, these sparks were flying everywhere. He said, stand back, boys, I ain't a joking. His body was jerking and his long john was smoking. Hair was standing straight up, he must have really been scared. We was trying to tell Paul what we had done. Saw Ma coming with her old shotgun. She said, step aside, boys, ain't no Martian gonna get my man. When a mule ran out of the barn with a bucket on his head, Ma let go both barrels, filled him with lead. Thought he was a Martian, couldn't make her understand. Yeah, he must have went through a spiritual change. He don't look the same anymore. 
Jesus works hard every day, goes to church every Sunday. No more loafing at the country store. Treat the song if you even quit you on the backer. Ain't cussed or drink ever since. The night that Paul got hung in that electric fence. We got Paul out when the battery went dead. He is stiff as a board when we got him in bed. Me and my brother got scared, snuck the fence back to the store. They still swore up and down that the marksman was there. He been able to do nothing with Paul's hair. Can't figure out why the mule won't need to have a bucket anymore. cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore. House warmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. <laughs> Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Diamond Gusset Jeans. The original Gusset Jean. Careful craftsmanship. Continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans. Born and worn in the USA since 1987. Is it the insightful strategies and analytical capabilities that make Edward Jones one of the biggest financial services firms in the country? Or is it 13,000 financial advisors who take the time to say thank you? Night, Jim. Gonna be a while? I am, Liz. Got a little writing to do. It's why Edward Jones is the big company that doesn't act that way. <laughs> 